Yeah, all right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is vlog day. And yeah, I got a vlog all planned out for you right now. I I've got a lot of stuff going on today. There's one phone call in particular that I'm, I'm waiting to jump on, but I think we're gonna. I think we're still going to do a full, full vlog. I'm going to do that thing right now where I put all the timestamps down here so you can see what's here, what's included, what might be coming up, what might be missing. You might notice, maybe, I don't even know right now, but you might notice that beer might be missing. I'm going to do my best to, to get in a time machine and to shoot a beer segment a little bit later on but beer is one of those things it just uh, it just might be missing but I think we have all of the other segments here we're gonna do some vape mail I have some vape mail here I've got a retro vaping all planned out in fact I got two retro vapes right now sitting on my desk and I genuinely don't know which one I'm gonna choose but rest assured that the next two retro vaping segments are gonna be are gonna be pretty rad. I got I got out some pretty cool stuff and I'm excited to vape it. We also have a juice tasting as well, Essence Essence Vapor Co. I think that's what they're called. Yeah, we have another juice from Essence Vapor Co. We tried their uh, Fuji Apple Hibiscus not too long ago. I wasn't a fan. Wasn't a juice for me, but I thought I'd give them another shot out there. So we got a juice from Essence Vapor Co. Um, I do have. Mm, I might also leave out that segment where it's like a Grim Green reviews a vape thing that he's never even tried before. That might also be getting the axe, but there is going to be favorite comments of the week. There is going to be viewer mails. There is going to be everything else. Getting to know Grim Green, all the things. Who cares? Welcome. Welcome to the vlog. And before we get too far into this vlog, I do want to do that thing. That is my favorite thing to do where I hear from one of my subscribers. It's a little bit longer of a video, but right now I'd like to hear from Mr. Domino. Why, hello, Mr. Green. My name is Domino, and um, I'm a longtime subscriber and first-time caller. But unfortunately, uh, the reason that uh, I'm sending you this is kind of tragic. Um, my local vaping community in uh, Boston's North Shore uh, just recently had a loss. Um, a local brick and mortar that I work with, Jolly Vapors, uh, the owner's brother Joe just recently passed away and left behind uh, a wife, two kids, one more on the way. So uh, what the owner Jack decided to do for his brother was um, start a juice line because um, Joe was a DIYer who used to bottle his own uh, juice and um, they're going to use some of his old recipes to start this line which uh, all the proceeds are going to go into trust for uh, the three children that he left behind. They asked me to do my pot but I mean I'm just a small YouTube channel and I really don't have the reach that this message deserves so I'm reaching out to you hopefully to uh, at least get the word out to um, your subscribers who live uh, on Boston's North Shore or in the Merrimack Valley around Lowell um, to check out this juice line because it's for a really good cause and uh, all, th all three of the juices are, are very, very good. I, I don't want to plug. I mean, you're not going to find many other reviews uh, on the juice, but if you want to check it out, please do. Um, or at least uh, go down to the shop and try it out for yourself. Uh, it's sold uh, both at Jolly Vapors and Lynn Mass on 104 Woodman Ave. And it just uh, also got picked up by uh, Empire Vaping Company in Lowell, Mass. Um, so yeah, I just would like to get the message out there to the, the local vaping community in Boston uh, to check out this juice because it's for a good cause. And uh, vaping is all about a community. And uh, I just want to do my part. So uh, hopefully this makes it on the show. Of course, you have my permission and uh let's keep on vaping yeah absolutely domino absolutely thank you so much. i'm gonna go ahead and shout domino out for getting this information out there absolutely if you're in that boston area that he spoke about i'm not uh i'm not from boston i've actually never been to boston and i want to say domino love the boston accent i know it's just an accent i know it's just a thing but I love the Boston accent. It's my favorite. And I must say, Domino, you have a great, like, presenting, like a radio presentery voice. I feel like you would do real well on the radio or real well with, like, a podcast or something, man. Absolutely. Horrible. I mean, that's that's a horrible loss. That's a horrible thing to go through. This poor guy and his wife and his kids, and they have this juice line. Domino didn't say the name 
of the juice line. But if you're in the Boston area and you want to go to Jolly Vapors and you want to go to Empire Vape Co., you know, what's what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to go try some juices. You might find a new juice you really like, and then you can know that the money from that new juice that you really like is, is genuinely really going to a very, very good cause to help this guy's family. This poor man lost his brother, and I think that's very cool. I think it's very cool that the brother was like a big DIYer and had all these recipes, and now that he's passed, like his recipes can kind of like live on and become a juice for other people to vape, for maybe other people to vape, to, to get off of cigarettes. Uh, that's huge. That's a huge thing. I'm so sorry for your loss, but absolutely, if you're in that area, you should definitely, you should definitely go to Jolly. I want to go to Jolly Vapors and try this juice out. So I definitely think if you're in that area, you should just, just swing by. Just, they seems like a friendly guy. Seems like it's going to be a friendly place, friendly shop. Just go swing by. What have you got to lose? Thank you so much, Domino, for sending in that video. Um, if anybody else out there has any videos that they want to see featured at the top of the vlog here, just send them on over. Nick at GrimGreen.com. You just mark it that... You know that thing, that one thing, your your stupid your stupid favorite thing that you like to do. And whether you want to shout people out or shout out your shop or just shoot the shit or just tell your story, it's all welcome. And you can send them on over to me, Nick at GrimGreen.com. The Stig, yes, I remembered. I kind of remembered. I had a reminder. Before we get to what I've been vaping, I do run a real quickly. I mean, this is going to be a real quick thing. I want to talk about the Stig. I want to thank you, Kevin, for the reminder about the Stigs. And Kevin, congratulations on your three years of being tobacco free thanks to vaping. But he sent me an email with big, it just said Stig with like a thousand exclamation points. And, and I saw that email yesterday and I went, all right. I'm going to write this down. I'm going to remember to talk about the Stig. So uh, I, th this isn't going to be a review for the Stig. I just want to say um, I do really like the Stig. I think the Stig is a fantastic little vape, assuming that, I don't know, you kind of use it the correct way. And I, I don't know. I don't want to say the correct way. Here's the thing. There's no rules in vaping. You vape until you feel satisfied and then you stop vaping. For some people, for a lot of people, it becomes like this habitual thing. Like you just keep vaping and you just keep vaping. And I think 50, five, zero milligram is a really high nicotine level to be like habitually vaping. So I use the Stigs in very rare circumstances, maybe where I'm like at a theme park right? Or, or, or I'm at a concert. I was at, uh, you know, I don't want to incriminate myself here, but I was at uh, a Paramore concert not too long ago at the Forum. Fantastic show. Unbelievable show. And the Forum is just the, the coolest venue ever, but it's not about that. I was at a Paramore show and I had a little stig in my hand, in my pocket during the show, just watching Paramore and just singing along and seeing seeing you know my my future ex-wife Haley Williams down there just dancing around and being awesome and super cool and occasionally I'd do one of these jobs and that's it you don't really exhale anything and you're not really bothering anybody and now I, I get a little bit of nicotine and I do that like you know a few times three or four times during out throughout the show that's all you need with 50 milligram juice i really think the stig has a really niche market that's like a a really helpful thing for smokers and a, and a really helpful thing for vapors and i was wondering like what is this like what's What's inside here? How does this thing even work? It's just a plastic body, right? And I know a lot of people, I mean, have a lot of people taking these apart. So anyway, I decided to take one apart. I took my wire clippers because I couldn't figure out a better way to do it. And I just kind of like cut along the top with my wire cutters. I just cut off these huge chunks of plastic. And all that's on the inside of these stigs, it's a completely plastic housing. And on the inside of it, you have this long, battery looks like the batteries that used to go inside like egos like joytech ego batteries and then you have this long much higher capacity tank than i thought what i pictured in my head in here was very much like a pod system i figured there's going to be a battery here and then there's going to be a pod up here and then you have a mouthpiece here like it's going to be just an all-in-one sort of like pod system guy uh but the tank on the inside is is tall it's like a tall capacity tank and what i really liked when i looked down in here and saw the bottom and the heating elements 
this should really be uppy closey. And I apologize that it's not uppy closey. I should have done this. I can't do it now. I'm, I'm in too far. I'm in too deep. <laughs> I apologize. I just can't do this uppy closey. But if you have a Stig, you can just rip the thing apart and see what's on the inside. And it's a big, it's a long battery and it's connected to the auto switch here on the bottom with a little blue LED indicator. And then there's this big, tall, long tank in the inside. And what I liked when I looked down at this tank is I think it uses Niachrome. I'm not really sure. I think it uses Niachrome. It might use, it might use Canthal, which that's not really going to matter to a lot of people, but there are people with like Canthal sensitivities as well as people with Niachrome sensitivities. So those types of people, they're always aware of what they're vaping. I'm a person that, you know, I don't have a sensitivity to either, so I don't really care. If it's Niachrome, cool. If it's Canthal, cool. Just I'll vape it. Just let me vape it. It doesn't affect me in any way. When you come down here, you can see this tank and you can see what looks like something that would be in like uh, an atomizer. You know what I mean? It's not a weird like ceramic coil or anything like that. It's a round wire build plugged into the leads with like a stripe of cotton going right through the middle of it. For me, seeing that on the inside, it was kind of like a very reassuring way. I like to know what's going on inside of my vapor products. That's why I like installing my own coils. That's why I like having a sub ohm tank that you can see down in there and you can see and you can go, okay, well, it's got this cotton and then it's got this mesh and I know what's going on in there. This is, you know, that's how I vape. I vape with wire and cotton or mesh and cotton and, and that's how I vape and it's just, overall really nice to know that on the inside of the stig there's nothing weird going on there's nothing fishy going on it's a round wire build with cotton through the middle and then a big tank on top i just thought that was uh i just thought that was really interesting and it honestly made me like the stig even more knowing that there's not any other i wonder if this would still work light no, it's still not going to work. I must have broken one of the wires or something on here. I just thought that was very cool, and I was very reassuring to see something familiar inside of the Stig. You know what I mean? It's like it's this closed system. You don't really know what's going on there. You know, you don't really know what the heating element looks like. You don't really know what they're using for wicking and, you know, and the battery and how all this works. Just to be able to take it apart and inspect and go, oh, okay, well, this is a battery we've been using for a long time. And, oh, okay, that's a round wire build with cotton in the middle sitting underneath the giant take. I've already been, you know, vaping this way using round wire and using cotton. And now I'm repeating myself. It was just very cool and very, uh, I don't know, very reassuring. I breathe a little sigh of relief knowing that there's nothing real weird going on inside of those stigs. It's just a different form factor for the vape that we've been using and vaping and vaping and vaping all of these years. I mean, this, this build in here, this round wire cotton looks exactly like what I started vaping with, like way back in 2009. It's the technology hasn't changed, just the form factor has changed. So now that the, see how uneventful that was? I've been hyping it up for like two weeks simply because I forgot to talk about it. And now that the Stig thing is out there, there's probably people just sitting at home on their couch going, why, why, were, why were we waiting for that? That was the most anticlimactic thing ever. But now, at least at the end of vlogs, I won't sit here and go, oh man, I forgot the Stig again. Anyway, what I wanted to do right now is uh, real quickly just talk about what I've been vaping. It's gonna be a lot of repeats this week. Uh, Kennedy, Vindicator, 21700 mech mod, Kennedy RDA on top, Addy Boy Mystic. This is one of the vapes that sits on my desk and I use it constantly. I love it. I use it as a palate cleanser and I love that Kennedy RDA. I think I've said this every week since I've been using the Kennedy RDA, but I kind of forgot how fucking great the Kennedy RDA is. It's just, it's just fantastic. even with a slightly dying battery. And this Addy Boy Mystic Juice is delicious. It's the weirdest juice. If you're in the market, if you're looking, if you go through your vape stuff and you see your liquids and you go, ah, you know, I'm really, like I've, I've been vaping these liquids for a while. There's nothing been new that's like, it's really kind of blown me away. It's like, yeah, I love this juice, but I've had so much of it. And I love this juice, but I've had so much of it. This Mystic from Addy Boy will just, throw you for a loop. It's this weird, sweet, creamy peppermint thing. I haven't experienced anything like this. The closest thing that I compare it to, that I could compare it to, is uh, when Lane Cove released uh, 
What was their peppermint juice that they did for Christmas? I can't believe I can't remember this. Lane Cove. Uh, it wasn't Alice. It wasn't Helen. It wasn't my... Okay, I'm going to have to research this. I'm going to ask Ruby Roo. Nola, Mai, Alice, Samantha, <gasps> Helen. Hiccups. Okay, I clearly don't. Ruby Roo is gonna be so mad at me right now. Lane Cove had a wintertime like creamy peppermint juice. It, it's it's very similar. It's a very similar juice. It's like this really sweet creamy peppermint. And like I said, if you're bored or you're just apathetic about juices, Mystic from Addy Boy is something that could surprise you. It could just become your next all day vape. I never thought about vaping like a creamy peppermint before. I'm always like, I stick to what I know. I'm like, yeah, pony on acid. I like sweet fruit flavors. I like some bakery flavors. I love banana. That's, that's my flavor profile. That's my wheelhouse. You know, that's what I like. And I always think it's just really interesting with e-liquid to kind of step out of your wheelhouse a little bit. Like maybe try something weird, try something different that you've never tried before. Cause you never know like where your next all day vape is going to come from. And that's I mean, that's, that's, that's the joy of e-liquid. Also been rocking this thoroughly unimpressive setup. I mean, not unimpressive in that it doesn't vape well because it vapes amazingly. It's just not going to impress anybody. If, if someone's like, oh, you know, oh, what, what, what are you using there? Is that some like high-end mech mod? Was that a stab wood guy with a little mouth to lung RDA? What is that? Is that cool? And you go, no, it's, uh, it's the V-Zone. E-mask with the Falcon Resin Artisan tank on top. Just not a lot of uh, street cred, I guess, if that's even a thing in vaping, which it shouldn't be. I don't know what tangent I'm going on right now. But it's the E-mask with the Falcon Resin tank on top. I've got it loaded up with that strange fruit spoiled milk and a little bit of... A uh, little bit of CBD in there, too. And I love it. I love this vape. I love the Falcon Artisan Resin tank. I really like this E-mask, and it's just... It's such a damn reliable vape. This vape has honestly been my like, no matter where I go in the house, I'm going to take this with me. If I'm going to go in the living room and I'm going to eat lunch or I'm going to answer emails on the couch, yeah, I'm going to take this with me. If I'm going to go in the bathroom, yeah, I'm going to take this with me. When I go in the bedroom, yeah, I'm going to take this with me. If I go anywhere, when I'm brushing my teeth at night, this is just sitting there on the countertop while, while I brush my teeth and then I grab it and I take it with me to my nightside table. Just really like this vape a lot. Even with a dead, I mean, that battery is dead. These batteries are dead. Ah, there we go. Full batteries. So 75 watts, 0.13, triple mesh coil head in here. The one with the cotton and the wood pulp. Stellar, stellar vape, you guys. I also do have my K-Fun Light Plus. But I'm not going to show you what it's on because that might be used for retro vaping. But just know that I'm always, basically always vaping my K-Fun Light Plus. Too many things. And I've actually been hanging in there with the marquee. This has been sitting on my desk. The marquee on the, uh, you know, uh, Squid Industries detonator. I'm still rocking that Kilo Moo Series banana milk e-liquid out of it because it's just freaking delicious. And this marquee... Dude, even with a round wire build, there's just no way around it. This is a phenomenal restricted lung hit flavor banger of a vape. God, it's so good. It's such a good vape. Heavily, heavily rocking that. And I'd like to talk about another restricted lung hit. In fact, the way that this Silver Play RTA vapes reminds me of the way that this Marquee vapes. I feel like this Marquee is like the RDA version of the Silver Play. They're both very similar flavor banger restricted lung hit vapes. This is filled up with Turkish Harvest, which is the apple, green apple butterscotch sitting on top of the Squid Industries double barrel. Whoa, that's cosmic two Squid Industries mods. What? Squid Industries double barrel. It is a uh, 0.42 single coil at uh, 30 watts, a whopping 30 watts. And let me tell you, the amount of battery life that you get out of two 18650s when you're only using 30 watts is fantastic. Bet, literally like best battery life ever. I can't help it. I just love that tank so much. Also, heavily, 
heavily rocking that damn Mike Vapes Recurve Squonker mod. I hope to do a review for this as soon as I possibly can. My review schedule is going to be a little bit wacky next week um, just because I'm traveling the end of this week into next week. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes, but I hope to have a review for this as soon as humanly possible. It, it's kind of honestly just a really rad little unregulated squonker. And I use the term little lightly because it feels like you're holding a dual battery mod, but there is actually only one battery in here. It's a, it's a 2700. 2700 battery unregulated. I have a recoil rebel on top that was given to me by Coil Turd. I always have to give him credit now for getting this painted coil turd had this painted for me and sent it over to me it's just a very generous gift i love having a white rebel because i can put it on top i mean black and white and black and white that's so fucking cool white dhd rebel squonker it's just amazing this is loaded up with rocket blast and uh i love it i love this vape I feel like by the time I get to vlog day, like the time I get to actually sit here and shoot the vlog, all my batteries are dead. I never, for some reason, I just, I sit here on vlog day, it's like, oh, fuck, all my batteries are dead. The battery is dying in this. That's why I said that. It feels like very weak. And I'm also still rocking that, uh, Reload Vapor Squonker. I don't think it has a name. I genuinely think it's just the Reload Vapor Squonker and it's sitting still with that profile mesh RDA, which I'm still getting used to. It's it's real weird. It's a real weird vape. It's a very different vape than I'm used to. And I'm just mesh in an RDA is always just weird. And that doesn't mean it's not good. It just means it's real weird. I don't know if mesh in RDAs is something that I'm really like, really a big advocate of like mesh in RDAs. That's the way to go. I still like aliens. I think a pair of MTurk aliens will outperform whatever mesh you could possibly come up with inside of a, of a dripper RDA type of situation. But it's the profile. It's loaded up with... Lowrider. It's loaded up with Lowrider. It's a juice I love. I'm having a pretty good time with this squonker. I like how quick and, and snappy the button is. I don't like that you have to take your batteries out every time you take your juice bottle out. That's kind of a huge bummer in my opinion. And I generally don't like the big metal tube that goes through the middle of this squonker. Now, this isn't a review for the squonker yet, but there is a big metal tube that goes right down through the middle of your bottle. So when you're squonking it, you'll hit the metal tube and it's really difficult to get like the last juice out of your bottle because you can't squonk the bottle far enough to really get that juice up there because the tube kind of stops that from happening. It's kind of a bummer, but honestly, I've been enjoying this. It's a good vape. And of course, lastly, but certainly, certainly not leastly, this is the Aspen Mod Co. Monarch. Mine is named Fjord because instead of I think this is the greatest idea ever, but instead of serializing their mods like one through a hundred, like, oh, the first ones, the first run of these is gonna be a hundred and you got number 36. Instead of getting number 36, you get a named mod. They named them. Mine is named Fjord. Got it topped with, I mean, the Recoil Rebels, one of my favorite atomizers of all time. And this is, I mean, the end. This is this represents the very end of the water Malone. I've been rationing it. I've been rationing it and using it only sparingly throughout the day, but it's a fan. I mean, I don't need to talk about water Malone. Water Malone has its own street cred at this point. Water Malone is becoming like this legendary juice for me. Water Malone might be one of those like legacy juices that I was talking about in some older vlogs. It's just a juice that I love, that I just don't ever want to stop vaping. That, that's where Water Malone is headed. God, it's just so good. But yeah, that's what I have been vaping. So I still don't know what's coming next. I'm not sure if we're gonna jump in a time machine and go taste beer, and I'm not sure if we're gonna jump right into some vape mail, so I'm as surprised as you are. Let's see where this vlog goes. Am I 
stay in focus yet? Is this looking focused to you? Oh baby, but that does. So like I said, I do have some vape mail here to open up. It's not a ton of packages. In fact, I don't know if any of these are actually even from China. It's only about four packages, but <laughs> fuck it. They're here, so let's open them up. And this first one, I am uh, I am terribly, terribly excited about. This came from uh, Silver Steam Vapor, creators of the Titan mod. The Titan mod, God, I used to love the Titan mod so much. It was like, I mean, the Titan mod was for the longest time, like, my daily carry. It was my daily banger. I loved dual parallel unregulated box mods. I liked that it had a MOSFET in it and I was just a big fan of the Titan overall. Oh, and this looks like a Titan. Oh, dang, look at that Titan. It's even got kind of like this weird cool finish on it and that's the new Titan logo. It used to say Titan and have the swirl or have like the little half moon thing, but now it's just a big T with the big half moon thing. Oh, you motherfucker. Oh, that's cool. Look, Eric at Silversteam Vapor, that's cool. That's that's some of the coolest shit I've ever seen right there. How did you get Clutch? He engraved the Clutch logo onto the inside of my door. Eric, I want that on the outside. I want, I want it to say Clutch right there. But I think this is the 2700 or 21700, 2700. Let's try it. Let's do some battery science right now. Oh, maybe not. Maybe this is 18650s. No, it's 18650s. I thought that Silversteam Vapor did a 2700 version of the Titan, but Regardless, this is the new Titan uh, Dual 18650 unregulated box mod. Titan is always, it just feels nice. Just feels nice to hold a Titan again. I don't, what, I don't even have anything I can put on here right now. No, nope, I don't. I genuinely don't have anything I can put on this Titan right now. But anyway, there you go. Thank you, Silver Steam Vapor, for this Titan. I've missed them. I've missed the Titans. And I think this one is going to be some e-liquid. This is a new e-liquid brand that I saw on, uh, on Instagram recently, actually, called Mox. Oh, there's some other funness in, in here as well. First, the juice. Mox. Uh, strawberry dragon fruit. Strawberry dragon fruit. Strawberry dragon fruit. This one looks like it's a uh, strawberry dragon fruit. And then finally, we have a... Uh, it's a strawberry dragon fruit. Just in case, <laughs> just in case anybody's clear on what's here, it's the strawberry dragon fruit from Mox. 500 mils of strawberry dragon fruit from Mox. I think that they're assuming that I'm going to really enjoy this juice. Oh, and there's a squonker? Is this a squonker? Mass mods. The mass mods squonker. I have, uh, I have been genuinely really wanting to try one of these. I see them posted all over Instagram. Oh, that's cool. Oh wow, that is crazy. So it looks to be like a 3D printed single battery squonker with aluminum doors that I can make red or purple. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a very standard issue sort of uh, squonker on the inside. There's an on off button. I believe that's an on off button. Hang on, I'm gonna need a battery for this. Well shit, now I'm gonna need an atomizer for this. I genuinely just wanna see if this is an on off switch. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, I, I see what's going on here. It's uh, it's that mass mods like uh, thumb, not, not thumbprint, but like thumb sensor fire switch. First of all, let me show you guys this mod, this, this mod right here. Now, apart from the very unmatchy matchy white atomizer on top, this is the mod. It's mass mods. These are aluminum doors right here on a 3D printed mod. It's kind of got this I don't know, this this interesting shape to it, I guess, for holding it in your hand. And you can see right here, if I press my finger against the against the button, a little battery comes on. It's just a touch sensor. That's all I have to do. And then if I press it and press the button, it'll turn red and it'll fire. But if I try to fire this with anything other than my finger, it doesn't fire. That's gonna prevent accidental clicks. Like if this is in your pocket or your purse and it presses up against your keys or any, in, in, any inanimate object, it's not gonna be able to press the button down until it senses your finger and then it lights up blue, which is fantastic. You can see the level of your juice light up blue, press the button, lights up orange and fires. Like, <laughs> Come on, that's pretty fucking cool. And it is a single 18650. I was kind of hoping for like 
single 2700, maybe single 21700, but you know, single 18650 is fine. 18650s are good batteries. I mean, I've been using them for years. It's one of those things. Like I've been using them for years and years and 18650s are fine. And if they never invented a better battery, then I would have just lived with 18650s and they would have been fantastic, right? But now, now we have 2700 batteries. We got 21700 batteries. We got other batteries that I haven't even tried like 2650 batteries. It's all right. It's hitting harder than that recurve squonker right now just because that recurve squonker has a dying battery in it. And this is like a fresh 18650. All right, shit. Well, cool. That's very cool. Stoked for the juice. And I'm honestly kind of maybe a little bit more stoked for this mod. I like that. I like when you press your finger against it, it lights up like that. That's very cool. Oh, look, there was uh, there was instructions on the inside if I just looked. Bottom is off, mod will not fire. The middle is the capacitive touch. While holding the device, touch the button uh, and touch the button, bezel, and or the plunger. LED will activate to let you know that the mod is ready to fire. Top is bypass. LED will turn on and remain on. Mod will fire when the button is pressed. Yeah, and I got number uh, 375, so you know, be jealous or not. I don't know. Serial numbers have never mattered to me. Has serial numbers ever mattered to anybody? Well, it's very cool. Very cool. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about red doors because these doors look like they'll match like a red original recipe recoil cap. And I want to put these doors with an original recipe recoil on this mod like soon. Like as soon as I saw these plates, I went, oh, I know how I'm going to set that up. I'm going to make this all kinds of matchy. And I got juice from Mox that we'll probably put into a, a future very random juice tasting type of situation. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Uh, and he left a little comment on here that says, we wish so hard for it always, and it finally happened. And he printed out on a UPS like packing slip. That's a, that's a face swap with Dwayne's head on my body and my head on Dwayne's body. Ah, uh, if only that were real life. If only that were real life. Hang on, you know, you gotta break down the boxes, right? You gotta recycle them for the environment and such. And this is from, uh, this is from District 5, and I think this is, actually the third layer cake they have sent me. Yeah, boom, it's another layer cake. It's a gold layer cake. So this is the third, oh, okay, the gold looks sick. What? Okay, before I even put a fingerprint on this, let me show you. See that? You see that gold? Fucking sexy gold layer cake. That is just a pretty, <laughs> Pretty atomizer. I wish I liked this atomizer more than I do. Maybe this will motivate me to actually use it more than I do. Here's the thing. I haven't really got along with the layer cake very well at all. I, I had a few before that I built and then I saw like the safety thing and they're like, okay, no, no, we're gonna correct it. And then I got a new one that was like the corrected version of the layer cake and I didn't love building on it. I found it to be kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass. And because of the way I positioned my coils, I wasn't getting really good flavor. So I really need to spend a little bit more time with the layer cake. I need to really pay attention. The last time I built it was in the middle of a vlog. Like, and whenever I build something in the middle of a vlog, which right now it doesn't look like I'm gonna have anything to set up and vape. I mean, we already put batteries in the Titan, which, I mean, it's a dual parallel box, so there's not much, I mean, not a whole lot to talk about there. I could set up this squonker. Certainly, absolutely, I could do that. And now I have a District 5 layer cake. And whenever I'm setting something up, like in the vlog, that I want to vape in the vlog, it's always a little bit rushed, just because I'm on kind of a limited time frame when we're shooting these vlogs. So it's always a little bit rushed. And I think I need to experiment a little bit more with like, coil positioning, I, I, it was getting horrible flavor. I mean, 
truly really mediocre flavor from that layer cake and I think it's because my coils look at this so this is my coil and here's my wick like this and then here's the deck I had it set down really low like the way that the layer cake opens up I just slid my leads in straight and screwed it down and went okay well that was I mean that was easier than I thought it would be I guess and then you have to what I think you have to do is take those coils and l raise them up you see here's the wicks that go down the coils go up so it can actually be in front of that airflow instead of having the airflow kind of skim over the top of the coils that's just I don't know it's whatever that's my non-science science for the layer cake the last thing here is something I'm actually really super excited about this is uh, you can tell from the graphic on the outside this is from uh, CKS fucking cloud kicker society who I haven't uh, where they weren't even at the last ECC. CKS was not there, and that really bummed me out. But I always like getting packages from CKS, the Cloud Kicker Society guys. I've always liked them. They've always been cool, super cool with me. Ren and those guys, always awesome. Always awesome. What's inside? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. There's some Asmodus stuff in here. Are they just using a Cloud Kicker Society box? No, that's not the Cloud Kick. That's the Fujin. Is that Cloud Kicker Society? That's not the Cloud Kicker Society Fujin. This is the Asmodis logo. They look really similar. Do they not? Am I wrong? I am. I feel like an asshole now because I legitimately thought that was from Cloud Kicker Society. Oh, okay. I get it. Their Fujin looks, uh, or Fujin. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. Theirs looks different. Theirs looks different than this. This is from Asmodus. I'm sorry, CKS. Look, it's just that I miss CKS so much that when I saw a package that had what I thought was the CKS logo Fujin on it, I instantly was like really excited. I was like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, CKS. All right, Cloud Kicker Society, let's see what you got. But that's okay. Asmodus, let's see what Asmodus has in here. This is a mod with no name. Ultroner. What are you, dude? EOS 280 watt box mod. There is the Voluna 2 RTA. Could be a contender for something we set up here on the vlog. Oh, I think this is a knife. They said they were sending along a uh, Damascus steel knife. We should definitely open this up. Oh yeah, shit, look at that. That's fucking cool. That's, uh, it's a stabilized wood like handle here and it is a Damascus steel blade shit that's cool i feel like this is uh i feel like this might be a little bit too fancy for for vape mail but fuck that's a cool knife that's a very cool knife thank you thank you asmodus what else do we got in here oh uh the dog rda rta Ooh, what do i set up the dog or the valuna the dog or the valuna who's calling me hello hi this is elma from dr benjamin's office ah hello hi to confirm for tomorrow, yeah, sounds good. Great, thank you. See you guys then. Bye bye. No problem. That was my dentist's office confirming my appointment for tomorrow morning. Fantastic. Now, uh, now I just got reminded that I have to go to the dentist. All right, so what do we set up? The dog are the RTA or the Voluna 2 RTA? Hmm, kind of leaving toward the dog. I know the dog was designed by uh, Vapors MD, and I think that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll set up the dog rta on like the titan maybe we'll just do that real fast this is literally uh the last package in the mail segment the voluna 2 is the successor to the asmodus voluna they're promising that the voluna 2 will blow my mind with cloud and flavor production this is achieved by our flavor boosting delrin drip tip all right the dog rta all right dog rta wins Dog RTA wins. Now I have to keep all of this handy dandy information from Asmodus on hand. All right, so that brings us to the end of vape mail. The mess, the mess is not as big today. The mess is not nearly as bad as it usually is. I usually have a lot more packages and a lot more packages from China as well. But what I'm gonna do right now is just real quickly get all of this cleaned up. I'm going to dig out this dog RTA and I'm gonna put it on top of uh, this 200 watt box mod that I got from Asmodus. I kind of would rather put it on the Titan. We'll see where the resistance ends up. And if I need something regulated, I'm going to throw it on this 200 watt EOS 2 box mod. But if I can get it into like a parallel configuration, I'm definitely going to throw it on top of a Titan because this Titan says clutch on the inside. Love that so much. So anyway, yeah, that's what we're going to do now. So I'll be right back.
So I built that dog RTA and it's a uh, it's not super complicated. It was just a little bit weird. I had a little bit where where did that even come from? Honestly, I had a little bit uh, of a weird thing with it when I was building it. There's like a little bit of a learning curve. You know what I mean? There's a little bit of a learning curve like to, to everything that comes out the way that this vapes. Uh, I guess I should talk about the build first before I jump into the way that it vapes. So here's the build I put in it. I use some uh, coil turd alien. I trim all my leads you know, together. So they're all the same length. It's kind of that postless deck design. So I just dropped in my coils. I tightened them down. I started getting them glowing and then I noticed where the airflow was. So I tried to like pull them over a little bit to the airflow and I started getting hot spots internally. And that's the, that's the most annoying thing that ever happens when you're installing coils is you get an internal hot spot. It took me forever to work it out. I had to separate all the coils, like space them all out, then get them glowing, then recompact them back together. Really, I should have just thrown, I just should have taken that coil out and discarded it and put a brand new coil in. But I wanted to make it work, damn it. But I finally got it working. I finally got it wicked. You need to cut your wicks a little bit longer than you think you do. It's, it's much different than an RDA. This RTA deck is set up a little bit and your wicks have a little bit of like traveling distance, not like a great distance, but like a little bit of a traveling distance, like down into the deck, down where it's going to get to your juice. I know that I cut one of them way too short. You can see these little wick chambers right here and I can see this one has wick and this one has wick and this one has wick and then this one I cut too short and it doesn't have any wick in it and so I instantly thought like well shit that's gonna flood and I'm gonna have juice coming out everywhere but it's been holding up these came out to exactly a 0.14 so I decided to try it out on that new Titan uh, you know parallel unregulated box I filled it up with uh, Bogan Bogan's Bruce fad dinkum it's a it's a weird juice it's a uh, it's like a lychee current like black current kind of situation going on i really like it but i also really like a lot of weird juices and i feel like this is one of those juices that i am really going to enjoy and that like other people will say that it tastes weird like that Whenever I find a juice that I really love, that is real unique. Oh, did I feel juice? I thought I felt juice dripping. Oh, maybe that was all in my head. That's a really weird mental thing as I was expecting this to leak and I thought I felt leaking, but it turns out it's not, it's not leaking in any way. The juice is good, um, but a lot of people are, I've, I have a feeling a lot of people are gonna think it's weird, but I've only taken one or two toots so far. So let's, uh, let's keep this train going. I got the airflow full open. I got the stock. 810 drip tip on top of it. It's a simple unscrew, you know, uh, unscrew, screw down sort of top cap for filling. You got big kidney shaped juice fill holes. It's, it's, it's a really like a straightforward RTA. And what I love most about this RTA, just look at that. Would you just look at this? Would you just look at that? No bubble glass to be found. And that really, I mean, this RTA has a lot going for it without a bubble glass. Let me tell you. It's good. On this unregulated box mod, it's a little bit um it's a little bit on the weak side. It feels a little bit on the weak side just because it's that 0.14 which is such an odd resistance. On unregulated, it feels a little bit too weak. I was going to put it on this EOS 2 Ultroner that I just got in the mail that is slick. You guys, this is slick. It's got a touchscreen display. It's this stabilized wood. And then for some reason it came with like this branded nail file. So I don't know if I'm supposed to like be sanding this and like polishing this wood up. The wood itself is very raw. It's very unfinished. It's not polished in any way. It's very, very smooth, but it's not polished in any way. So let's see if it happens again. But I originally had this tank on that Ultroner because of the resistance. I was like, 0.14, it's going to need regulation and unregulated is going to be a little bit too weak. And that was the case. That Titan, while fantastic, is just a little bit too weak. I need a little bit more power to go through this thing. Okay, well now it's maintaining the resistance perfectly at 0.15. When I was 
put when I put this tank first on this, the resistance was jumping all over the place, like all over the place. It would go from like a 0.16 to a 0.15 to a 0.2 to a 0.35 to a 0.45, back down to a 0.25, back up to a 0.45. And it was, you know, when you have wattage mode, the resistance is going to change the voltage output of the mod. So if I have this set at 61 watts, it's going to give me 61 watts, but the 61 watts is a different voltage if it's a 0.14 than it is if it's a 0.45. You know what I mean? And it was kind of really weird and jumping all over the place. Okay, now it's reading 0.16. All right, let's adjust this wattage and just try to vape it. It's got that slide down to unlock thing that a lot of Asmodus mods have. And it unfortunately adjusts in 0.1 watt increments when you're under 100 watts and that, that really bums me out. We're gonna try this, I don't know, how about 73 watts? Oh, that's far too weak, far too weak, Nick. What are you even thinking right now? A 0.14 is gonna be at at least 95 watts. Yeah, at least 95 watts. Fucking perfect, fucking perfect. That vape was unbelievable. I see bubbles happening on the inside. This dog RTA. Top to bottom, the construction is just fucking beautiful. It's full stainless steel construction. It's this really nice, like, matte black finish that just looks... It looks so fucking cool and murdered out. I love it. You take off this drip tip, you can see all the way down to your coils. It very much feels like a, like a nice RDA. It doesn't feel... It doesn't... You know, there's a lot of... People, okay, collect your thoughts, Nick. How about that first? Everybody wants an RTA that vapes like an RDA. Like, at least for a really long time, that's what everybody was concerned with. Like, finally, an RTA that vapes like a dripper. Finally, an RTA that vapes like a dripper. Why not have an RTA that vapes like the best fucking RTA on the market? Why not shoot for that goal and trying, instead of trying to make an RTA that, <laughs> that vapes like a dripper? If I want... A something that vapes like a dripper. I'll just use a dripper. This RTA has astonishingly smooth airflow. I'm, I've never used this before, but the airflow on this feels a little bit crispy to me. And I know that's a hard thing to describe, but it feels smooth and it feels crispy. And I think the crispiness comes from the combination of the smooth airflow and like the very slightly crackly coils on it. Nope. <laughs> Resistance jumped up to 0 0.35. 0 0.35 all of the sudden. Nope, I don't trust this thing. Resistance is jumping all over the place and it doesn't do that on... Okay, here, here we go. Let me grab another regulated device. This is the one that I was going to use for retro vaping, but now we're not using it for retro vaping. So let me put this tank on another regulated device and just see what the resistance does. This was already set to 94 watts. That's creepy. It was reading it at a 0.35 as well, and now it dropped back down to a 0.18? There's gotta be something weird going on in this tank. It's gotta be with the way I installed my coils or something, right? Like, that's the only conclusion I can come to. Yeah, a 0.16, which is what this is supposed to be at 94 watts, is fucking perfect. That's exactly the kind of vape I'm after, man. That is delicious. This fair dinkum is delicious. This tank is delicious. And it seems to be holding at 0.16. I'm gonna take a few more poles, and if this resistance doesn't jump around, then it could be the fault of this Ultron or EOS 2 mod. Still good? Still good? Still good and still wicking like a champion. I mean, this is basically chain vaping it and the wicking is keeping up. Still good. Still good. It's the mod. It's that EOS 2 from Ultroner from Asmodus. The resistance is just jumping around like crazy. It could be... I'm trying to I'm trying to exclude some things that it could be. So it's not my build. I can run it on the Titan and it's fine, and I can run it on this Arc USV Arc mod and it's fine. But whenever I put it on the Ultroner, I get resistance jumping. I'm thinking that it might be the 510 pin not making a good connection because this 510 pin is not 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 
not hybrid safe. It is a very unprotruding 510 pin, and I don't know if it's adjustable in any way. Let's try that out. I mean, if I unscrew this a little bit, I feel like it's gonna unscrew my, uh, I feel like it's gonna unscrew the deck in there. So I feel like that does kind of have to be snug the whole time. All right, what are you reading? Nope, 0.4. It just jumped up to a 0.4. It's reading it as a 0.4, 0.31, 0.37, 0.2, 0.16. Point two six, point three eight, point three three. There's something weird. There's something weird going on in this Asmodus EOS two Ultroner. I'll get with Asmodus and see what's up with that. Because that's a. I mean, that to me is kind of an unacceptable thing to have in a regulated mod. You're relying on that mod to read your resistance, to keep the resistance consistent, and to keep that wattage. You know where where you want it. See jumped right back down to a 0.16 and it's staying at a 0.16. And this tank with a 0.16 at 94 watts is awesome. All right, well, so now that it's completely, completely vaping in here, it's time to wrap this segment up. Dog RDA, fair dinkum on the inside. It's kind of easy to build, a little bit of a learning curve, kind of easy to wick, a little bit of a learning curve. Overall fit and finish, amazing. Overall look of this RDA is stellar. <laughs> Why? Why? Overall look of this tank is stellar. No bubble glass. No bubble glass and matte black. That's how I like my tanks. So. What we're gonna do right now is blindly jump into my getting to know Grim Green folder of questions. It's time to get to know Grim Green. All right, so, okay, so this first one, the first two questions are, are uh, pretty similar, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna read both of them and then we'll answer it. Um, Merlin. Uh, it's Merlin? Merlin wrote to me. Hey Nick, uh, I really wanted to ask about Disneyland and why you love Disneyland, but I guess you'd come around to that in the future. We will, don't worry, we will. What I really want to hear is how you and Omboy OC started out as friends, and if it's not too much, is there an Omboy OC Grim Green story that we haven't heard that wasn't in the Bro Trip series? Wishing you the best. Shout out from the Philippines, where you are a vape inspiration. Absolutely. Thank you. I mean, thank you so much. And we're going to get to this in a second, but not before I read Jordan's, because Jordan had an email. He said, yo, yo, Grim. Yo, yo, Jordan. My name is Jordan, and I just joined the Cool Kids Club. I have a question for you, getting to know Grim Green segment. I wanted to know, you and Dwayne and Kent, aka Twisted Messes, seem like great friends. Uh, I watched all the bro trips. I wanted to know how you guys met. Also, is there going to be another bro trip in the not too distant future? Also, you can use my name and segment in this vlog. Keep doing what you do. Keep on vaping. Sent from my iPhone, Jordan. Yeah, absolutely. So we had Jordan and we had Merlin asking about Dwayne, basically. Not so much Kent, more along the lines of Dwayne. But uh, yeah, Dwayne and I have been really good friends. Uh, I mean, almost basically since the first time we met. I apologize. I'm going to need something in my hand to fiddle around with. Here we go. Let's grab this. Uh, let's grab this Oros. Dwayne and I have been friends um, since 2015. Um, I moved down to Southern California uh, right around that same time, late 2014, early 2015. And I didn't know anybody here. I, I mean, I had some acquaintances, like I knew CJ Vaping Monkey, and I, and I knew a few very random people. I had met James from Rig Mod, and I had met a few people, but I didn't, I came down to Southern California, and I didn't really have any, like, friends, friends that I, like, would call or hang out with or update or be like, you'll never believe what happened in Trader Joe's today. Like, I didn't have any of, like, friends, friends, like, close people that I would consider friends. I just had like some acquaintances, right? And, I, and Chelsea, Chelsea from Society of Vape was my friend. I would consider her my friend. She was, she was a fantastic person. I miss Chelsea like crazy. Chelsea, if you're out there and you're watching the vlog, I, I still love you. I still think about you constantly and I hope you are doing uh, just fantastic. Ch Chelsea ran Society of Vape and she was just a fantastic person. And Chelsea is the one that introduced me to Omboy OC at the uh, SoCal Vape Expo that was held in San Diego. I saw that there was a vape event happening in San Diego and I was like, well, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm just going to go. I'm going to wait in line and I'm going to pay and I'm going to get in and I'm going to go to this event because I really want to. And Chelsea was there and Local Vape was there and Omboy OC was there. And so we're sitting at the local vape booth and I'm talking to the only person I know, which is Chelsea. And I'm talking to her and she's like, dude, have you ever tried? I think I've told this story before. It sounds very familiar, doesn't it? She's like, 
dude, have you ever tried Anarchist Wire? And I was like, no, I've never, like, I, I'm, you know, I, I was in a weird, weird time in my life. I was having a real hard time uh, adjusting to certain things in the vape industry, but that's neither here nor there. I said, no, I haven't really tried Anarchist Wire. I, you know, I, I like Canthal. You know, I'm like, I like Canthal, these, these gimmicky wires like Hot Wires and Royal Wires and, and, and G Plat and Anarchist. I'm like, I don't really care it's not really my thing she's like no you have to try anarchist wire okay you have to try anarchist wire i'll go get a build in your rda that's anarchist wire right so i was like okay cool so she gets me a build with the anarchist wire and i'm vaping it i'm like fuck okay this is actually really good what is this she's like it's nichrome it's a special nichrome blend that only anarchist does and it's really good for flavor and i'm like dude this is this is really good like this is shockingly good flavor that I'm getting from this RDA using this anarchist wire and she's like well let me introduce you to Dwayne so I'm I she introduced me to Dwayne and I see Dwayne kind of walk over and he's wearing his snapback and he's got his socks pulled up and his dicky shorts and he's just this cool muscly guy covered in tattoos and I was instantly intimidated like instantly intimidated I didn't know what to say I didn't know I all I knew was that Dwayne was like the coolest person that I had ever seen, and I was Nick, and I'm like this like idiot, like, hey, hey, I'm Nick, nice to meet you, dude. Dwayne was like the coolest guy, and all I wanted to do was like be friends with Dwayne, and talk to Dwayne, and like get to know Dwayne, because I thought he was just like the coolest person that, that I had ever seen in my life, like legitimately like a cool person person and I, I was never a cool person high school middle school I mean throughout most of I've never been a cool person ever like I, I just I still don't consider myself a cool person and here was this cool cool person Dwayne coming up to say hi to me but we sat down we hung out we talked about vape we talked about anarchist really great interaction and then that was it like we met and that was it and, and it was very cool and I and I felt I felt cool like i felt like all right i could be i could be friends with this dude i could be friends with this dude Dwayne. i think he's in southern california and you know i didn't like i'm you know what do you do it's weird with guy friends like what do you do you don't like, hey can i get your number maybe we can hang out sometime like that's really weird so i had to wait until another time where i was going to hang out with Dwayne, and that was going to be the time where i was going to be like all right we're going to turn this into like a friendship like we're going to spend a lot of time together and we went to um, one of my favorite events that I've ever been to, the VPX event in Niagara Falls. I loved it. I got I got to meet Tooney there as well. But Dwayne was there with Local Vape, and that's where I met Turk, and that's where I met Twisted Messes IRL. I had only exchanged emails with Twisted Messes because I sent him some of my Comp Vape RDAs to build. He sent me Fuse Claptons. This is way back in 2013, even before I moved to Southern California. And I had never met Kent. And our emails between me and Kent were strictly business. Uh, he's like, hey, I'll build your RDAs. And I was like, cool, I'll send you some RDAs and, and you can build them. And he's like, hey, I built those RDAs and I'm shipping them back. And I was like, cool, thank you. I'm looking forward to it. And then I get them in the mail and I emailed him and I'm like, Kent, thanks for these RDAs. The builds look beautiful. And I post it on Instagram. And then like, that was the extent of my talking to Kent. Little did I know what, uh, like what he would become, you know, later in my life. Dwayne too. Little did I know what good friends we would become and what a like crazy person Kent w would turn out to be. Look, that was rude. That was mean. Kent's not crazy. Kent's not crazy, but we're going to talk about Kent in a second. So we were at this event in Niagara Falls, and I was with there with Ruby Roo, and I was there with uh, Matt and Vanessa from Suck My Mod, and I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> All right, cool. And so I made uh, an effort. I made an effort to spend as much time at the local vape, vape, booth, vape booth as I could to hang out with Dwayne. And I wanted to talk to Dwayne. And we just quickly, quickly hit it off. Quickly hit it off. We went to the casino to hang out, and we had drinks, and 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 it was great. And and me and Dwayne, we just started. We just started being buds. You know what I mean? We just started hanging out and being buds. And Dwayne is one of those guys. And I knew when I met him, but he's one of those guys that I knew that I would be able to hang out with effortlessly like it would take no effort like we can just hang out like even when he was here we were sitting in my living room just playing bricks and balls on, on our eye devices and it was awesome and we can just hang out and it's effortless and 
he's such a cool guy. I'm so thankful that I met Dwayne at the time that I did. And I'm so thankful that Dwayne and I became friends the way that we did because I, I love Dwayne. I respect the fuck out of Dwayne. And he's just one of those guys that I knew I was going to get along with. And we just effortlessly kind of became really good buds. Kent, Kent took me a while to like become like get to that friendship level with Kent. When I met Kent in Niagara Falls, we spent zero time together. We hung out zero time. We took one really awkward selfie and the whole time we were taking selfies, he kept like changing his face. Like I was like, "Hey, let's take a selfie." And so I smiled and I took like three or four pictures like, you know, you got to get a good one, right? And the whole time Kent's like making like these like weird different faces to the camera and I was like every picture is different I guess this is the best one and that's the one I'm gonna post and when I first met Kent I just thought he was the strangest person I've ever met the strangest person I've ever met I was like I, I honestly thought I was like I don't know I don't know how close me and Kent are gonna get he's just he's just very strange but that's the thing is you have to get Kent and what's once, once you get Kent and you understand him and you understand his personality, then that's when you can, that's when, once you get past this like exterior that is Kent, you get to like the warm gushy center of Kent that builds tables and, and loves his girlfriend and hangs out with his cats. You get, you get to that like, like heartwarming center of Kent. And it honestly wasn't until, good Lord, I don't even remember when when we kind of me and Kent kind of crossed that threshold of like becoming friends. Like he's someone I'll text and be like, you know, you'll never guess what happened in Trader Joe's today. He's that guy, and I don't know when that happened, but I knew that I had to learn Kent. And after I learned Kent, then it was like, oh, I love this guy. I love this man. He, it's Kent. It's Kent, man. It's Kent. And Merlin uh, was one of the two. Someone was asking about bro trips. Um, we do have another bro trip planned. I think we. I think I want to go back out to Dumont Dunes with Dwayne and Kent and uh, maybe Fiends, maybe Turk, maybe Casey Pickle. I'd love to get maybe Ruby Roo. I'd love to get her out to Dumont Dunes and do another bro trippy type of thing. But... I don't really have any travel planned for the rest of the year. Like I'm getting married in November and I just don't, I just don't have any travel plan for the rest of the year. I'm not going to any vape events for the rest of the year, which is actually, which is actually a pretty good feeling. So yeah, that's the story of Kent. That's the story of Dwayne. And uh, I feel like that took an excessively long time. So let's just do one uh, one quick, one other quick one. Uh, hi, Nick. My name is Matt. I'm from the UK. Feel free to use my name in your vlog. Just a quick question. If you weren't doing YouTube full time, what do you think you would be doing for a job or career? What is your dream job? What or what your dream 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 job would be? See, that's the thing is I'm dyslexic and I end up trying to read too quickly and I'm like I know you've spoken before that you worked uh, your way through jobs at Starbucks. I myself am a barber and I love it. Thanks man. Keep up the good work. Keep on vaping. P.S. If I make it to the end of the vlog every week. All right, Matt. Well, I owe you uh, a crisp by five or a hug. You know, it's it's whatever at this point. You can have both or neither. I'm cool. Cool either way. When I first started doing YouTube full time, my plan for like two years was if this falls through, like going going full time with YouTube, and this is something I've talked about in the past, but going full time with YouTube was just, just a terrifying experience, man. Just a terrifying experience. And for probably two solid years, maybe a little bit longer than two solid years, I always thought in the back of my head, I had this little voice in the back of my head that was like, if this falls through, if this fails, if you fail at being a YouTuber, you can go back to work for Starbucks. They, they would welcome you with open arms. I could probably drive to the Carson Valley roasting plant where I worked before and apply as a job. I've got 12 years of coffee experience, five years of roasting experience, two years of quality assurance experience, three years of coffee tasting experience and three years of being a barista in Starbucks. So I have a fuck ton of Starbucks experience and that was my plan. That was always my plan that if I fail at this, 
then I would just go back to work for Starbucks. And that's the thing that I would do. And I would be perfectly happy working for Starbucks. I love coffee. I love the coffee culture. I would honestly love to work in coffee again. I jokingly said to Jabo at ECC, I was like, dude, we should open a coffee shop. And he was like, like, he didn't say no right away. And so I thought, all right, well, that's, I'm going to mark that down as like future plans. Like maybe me and Jabo are going to open up a coffee shop someday. Cause I would honestly love to work in coffee again. And what I've decided right now, I don't have like a, what I would be doing otherwise voice in my head anymore. What I want to do and what I know that I'm going to succeed at and what I know I love is being a YouTuber. I want to be a content creator in some shame, some shame, some shape or form or anything. That's what I want to do is create content. I love creating content. I love marketing. I like, uh, I like social media. I, I like all of this stuff and it's, it's what I do. I feel like I'm pretty good at it. And it's what my heart is really in. At this point, if all of this somehow failed, if, if I lost all of my subscribers tomorrow and all of my Instagram followers and I said something like I, I threw out a racial slur or something and everyone just abandoned my YouTube and I was just nothing anymore, I don't think I would go back to work at Starbucks. I would do something else. I've decided at this point in my life that I am not going to work for someone else. I'm never going to punch a time clock and work for someone else ever again. I'm never going to work really hard to make some CEO a lot more money. If I'm going to be working hard, I'm going to be making money for me and I'm going to be making money for me and my business partners. Dream job? Dream? Okay, so right now, so my dream job, this is way too long, I'm sorry. My dream job used to be rock star. Like, of course, you want to you want to be a guitar player in a band. You want to be uh, fucking James Hetfield up there with Metallica touring nonstop and I would still honestly love to play music, love to be in a band, but I have no desire to be on stage and play in front of 40,000 people. I, it's just not something I want to do uh, do anymore. And honestly, right now, I'm... I'm I'm kind of already doing my dream job. Being a YouTuber and being a content creator kind of is my dream job. And if I'm thinking in terms of what's beyond this, what's past this for Grim Green, uh, my dream job would be to have batteries that don't run out of life. Shit. All right, well, uh, shit, the rest of the vlog is gonna look like this because the batteries literally died in my lighting over here. I should have charged them last night and I have a feeling this one's gonna go down too. So we gotta, we gotta wrap this up. <laughs> we gotta keep, we gotta power through the rest of this vlog. Dream job, dream job now would be to uh, own and run like a successful vape company where I could like uh, design cool shit, release cool shit and have, you know, and have like, not necessarily like the Apple of vaping or like the Microsoft of vaping or something huge like, you know, uh, like this huge company of vaping. I, I want it to be, I want to, I, my vision is more of like, you know, the Mesa boogie of vaping, right? Like the Gibson guitars of vaping, like something really slick, really crafty, very cool. I, that's what I picture. I would love love, love, love to be able to do that. Um, that. That's one of my goals, you know, in the future. I mean, obviously I love YouTube. I'm going to be on YouTube as long as I can. But one of my goals to the future is to is to do something big, like have a have a cool company, have a big, cool, like respected company and uh, just treat people right and have fair prices and release cool shit and just cultivate this uh, this vaping industry that we're all in. You know what I mean? Um, maybe that's getting a little bit metaphysical for Matt's simple question of what my dream job is. I don't know. Dinosaur Wrangler. But anyway, Matt, thank you so much for writing in. That is going to definitely wrap up Getting to Know Grim Green because this has been going on for far too long. But if anybody else out there has any Getting to Know Grim Green questions that they would like to see answered by me uh, in this vlog program, just send them on over. Sorry about that. Just send them on over. Nick at Grim... Why am I so gassy? <laughs> Nick at GrimGreen.com. Just mark your subject, getting to know Grim Green. 
please, I'm okay with a little bit of intrusiveness, but not too much intrusiveness. Intrusive. It's gonna be a rough vlog, man. <sighs> not too much intrusiveness. Anyway, I just need to. I just need to calm down. I just need to slow down a little bit. But what we're gonna do right now? It's time. It's time to jump into some retro vaping. So I originally had something else today set aside for retro, retro vaping. I, I got it out last night, I set it all up, and it was ready, sitting on my desk, ready to go. And, and you know, I, I prep my vlog the day before, I get everything I need for the vlog the day before. So I had this retro vaping all set up, and then late last night, late last night I got this idea of two things that would work perfectly together and they are kind of actually both a little bit retro vapey and of course the first thing I'm talking about is the K-Fun. So I'm going to cover all this up and then you're going to see the K-Fun. The K-Fun, this particular K-Fun was purchased in 2013 and I have been using it ever since. It is my daily banger, my daily driver. I love 12 milligram, uh, you know, free base nicotine, traditional nicotine, whatever you want to call it. I love it and I love it in a K-Fun and I love mouth to lung. And this was originally being run on all of these like uh, regulated mods, right? So I'd get out these single 18650 regulated bangers and then I noticed, I noticed that I was running this at about three and a half, 3.5 volts anyway. And so I was like, well shit, man, that could go on like a tube mech. And I really, really, last night, I came in here real late last night, and I was like digging around, looking for a tube mech that would go well with this K-Fun. The K-Fun doesn't have uh, a really protruding 510 pin, so I knew instantly, it's like, okay, I can't run this on any hybrids. So then it's like, well, shit, every mech mod that's come out in like, you know, the last what, year and a half, two years, it's all hybrids, right? It's all hybrids. Nothing has a 510 pin anymore. Yeah, there are a few with 510 pins, but nothing I had readily available. Nothing that, certainly nothing that was 22 millimeters. And I knew, I'm looking at this K-Fun going, all right, it's 22 millimeters and it has a non-protruding 510 pin. I'm gonna need to go way back in time to find a mech mod that's gonna work well with this K-Fun. And what I grabbed out, I mean, I don't want to say it was a stroke of sheer genius, but it was kind of a stroke of sheer genius. This is a glass mech mod. Glass, G-L-A-S, was a brand that was around in the vape industry and vape community years ago. 2013, 2014. Don't even remember seeing them in 2015, if I'm being real honest. Oh yeah, okay, they were at ECC in 2015, the one that was at the fairgrounds out in uh, Pomona, the Pomona Fairgrounds, Fairplex, Pomona Fairplex, they were there, but I haven't seen them since because they made these beautiful, these mech mods are beautiful from top to bottom, gorgeous, beautiful mech mods, and they were also real expensive. They were catering to a real high-end sort of demographic, and you can't, I, it's hard for me to put into words how fantastic this glass mech mod is. It's 22 millimeters, it's 100% stainless steel, and it's got a self-adjusting 510 pin on top, in the top here, completely self-adjusting 510 pin. There's never a need to do anything to take up for battery rattle or anything like that. And it's got this little tiny, tiny, tiny short throw, very soft, very squishy, but insanely smooth switch on it. This K-Fun has a 0.6 round wire, nichrome build in it. At about three and a half volts, it's freaking perfect. And on this mech mod, it's a freaking perfect vape. No O's. It's unbelievable. It's an unbelievable vape. I love this K-Fun and on an unregulated, it's unbelievable. And this glass mod looks like it was just made to go with this K-Fun. Like, it's seamless. Even the color of the bottom of the tank of this stainless steel, the way that it's finished, it matches this glass perfectly, 
flawlessly. You can see, I'm gonna show you. So this is the glass mech mod, 22 millimeter stainless steel. And you can kind of see on the button, it's branded, but there's also like a, a really crystal clear sort of plastic on the bottom there. So you can kind of see the logo underneath it, which is just so fucking cool. And I know that this is a big battery on a big tube mod and it actually does look like a robot penis of some sort. I really wish I could track down a, like an 18350 glass mech mod, but that's besides the point. But look how well these fit together. Just, I'm gonna screw this K-Fun down onto this mech and look how flawlessly perfect that fit and finish is right there, having this K-Fun on this mech. It's like they were made for each other. And this switch is something that you're definitely not going to be able to appreciate unless you hold it. But the way that you lock it is you turn it counterclockwise, just very softly, and you feel it, bunk like pop into position, right? And then if you try to gently do it, it won't go anymore. And that's locked, it won't fire. And then when you wanna unlock it, it's the smoothest, glidiest sensation I've ever experienced ever. I mean, inside of vaping, outside of vaping, it's the smoothest, glidiest experience ever. And you just twist it this way, punk, and you feel it like, grab like it just softly softly sinks into place it goes punk and now you can't go any farther it's unlocked out of focus vaping it's just so hard to describe the beauty of locking and unlocking this mech mod it's so smooth and so glidey and when it gets into place you just feel it i don't know what's going on in this switch i haven't taken it apart to see how like that gliding locking mechanism works. I just know that A, it does work, and B, it's a thing of goddamn beauty to use. Locked, oh, so satisfying. Ready? Punk, unlocked. Oh, it's so fucking satisfying. And like I said, yeah, this thing's big. It's a baton, right? I mean, this is this is a big looking setup. I, I would prefer to run a K-Fon on like an 18350, which is weird because I was just talking about 18350s in the vlog not too long ago, and I was, you know, I was making all these like huge accusations, like I don't even know who, you know, who would possibly use an 18350 in 2018. That's a ridiculous notion. And then here I find myself with this beautiful glass mech mod on top of, with a K-Fon on top of it. And then fast forward to today and I find myself with this beautiful glass mech mod with my favorite K-Fon tank on top of it, wishing, genuinely wishing that I had an 18350 version of this mech mod. But as it stands, I don't even care if it looks weird or long or batani. I think it looks fucking fantastic with this mech mod and this K-Fon with the bell cap. In my opinion, that's just sexy as shit. And it happens to perform perfectly, perfectly on this unregulated device. I, it's I, it's incredible. It's incredible. This K-Fun now, I swapped flavors in it. This K-Fun is now 12 milligram uh, Helen from Lane Cove. Um, I asked specifically for a big bottle of 12 milligram of this Helen just so I could use it in this K-Fun. And it's, uh, you know, it's like a sour raspberry licorice, like red licorice type of thing. It's fucking delicious. I'm kind of in love with this little setup right here, the K-Fun and the glass mech mod. Now, I never reviewed a glass mech mod. Before I got this in the mail, um, and I believe this glass mech mod came from my old buddy Russ. Russ used to run Vigilante Juice Co. and now he does um, Vapor Stock Room. He had this, he wasn't using it, He's like, have you ever tried a glass mod? He sent it over my way and I got it and I was like, wow, this thing's fucking beautiful, but I have nothing 22 millimeter to run on it because every RDA that I have is like 24 to 25 millimeters. So it'll wait in the cabinet for the day that it gets used. When I had the bright idea last night that my K-Fun needed a mech mod, it was the mod that got used and I couldn't be happier about it. This is gonna be, 
this is going to be my thing, man. This is going to be my vape. This is going to be my daily driver. I've been looking for something new to put this k on, and I think it's going to rest very comfortably on top of this glass mech mod. Fit and finish, $345. $345. I can already hear the keyboards going. It's, like, it's just a metal tube. Why are they charging so much money? I am a firm, firm, firm believer that you get what you pay for, and I don't mind paying a little bit extra for something this insanely nice. And I realize this isn't a review for the glass. I'm not going to play the Aliens game because $345 is ex expensive. That is stupid expensive. That is vape budget hands times a thousand. But the quality of this mech is unreal. 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 I love it. I love this. I love this setup. And that that was retro vaping. That's how that's how vaping used to be in 2015. We had a lot more high-end stuff, a lot more really classy, well-made, well-constructed stuff, and I feel like since about 2016, the, the quality overall is just what it's just not it's like $40 Chinese plastic box mods. $20, you know, sub ohm tanks. It became like this bargain thing. And look, that definitely has its place. I'm not saying anything about Team Cheap Mod. Everybody has to vape, right? Everybody has to vape and everybody has vape budget hands. And I wish that there were more companies releasing, not necessarily a $345 fucking dollar mech mod, but releasing a little bit nicer quality stuff that's readily available so those that wish to purchase it can and they can buy like a nice a night i mean god you guys this mech mod has completely blown me away i wish i wish that i had tried one of these in 2015 because i don't think i would have ever stopped using it it's just so freaking beautiful okay enough that's enough gushing from me someone tell me to shut up so yeah that's going to be the end of retro vaping uh look them up online look for those glass mods watch some reviews and just so you can see how fantastic those mech mods were because i'm overjoyed that i have one and i'm overjoyed that i'm using one right now with a K-Fun. I would challenge anybody out there right now to be vaping a glass 18650 mech mod with a K-Fun Lite Plus and a bell cap. I, I couldn't imagine anybody else having this exact setup right now, but dude, I've been proven wrong so many times, it's not even funny. So I think we're going to skip the whole Grim Green reviews of ape thing that he's never even tried before. I love it. I really like that segment. Let me know if you guys like that segment and you want to see it as a regular thing in the vlog because I'm thinking about either making it a regular thing in the vlog or I'm thinking about possibly making it just its own like random Friday video like, oh, every Friday Grim Green reviews a vape thing that he's never even tried before. I feel like that could be very, very cool as well. So, since we're skipping that segment, what I'm gonna do right now is, uh, it's time to answer some viewer mails. Viewer mail. So I got a few viewer mails all picked out here, ready for the vlog. The first one, I'm gonna have to turn up my monitor brightness and that's gonna make the video look weird too. Eh, maybe not, who cares. Uh, patience. Patience sent me an email that says, hey there, Indiana. <laughs> so geography, right? Really bad with geography. Said I didn't know where Indiana was. Uh, Hi there, Indiana is surrounded by Michigan, Ohio, Illinois, and Kentucky. Michigan's up, Kentucky's below, Illinois to the left, and Ohio's to the right. Since I've educated you, I was hoping to ask for a semi-weird favor. All right, well, don't think that a little bit of, like, geography knowledge is gonna get you to, you know, get me to do anything too weird for you here, patience. And that's actually really helpful, only... I can't picture, see that's not helpful. I can picture where Michigan is on a map. So Michigan is above, then I kind of get where Indiana is, but I still can't picture Kentucky um, on a map. So anybody from Kentucky, email me, tell me what states are surrounding you. Anyway, uh, my boyfriend is a super dedicated fan of yours and I was wondering if you could give him a nonchalant shout out, like just a simple, uh, hey Matthew, heard you're a fan or something like that. Uh, it'd be the best part of his day. He does deserve it. He is the one who got me to switch from the cancer sticks to vaping, and he is a dedicated advocate. Thanks so much, man. Have a good day. Oh, hey, Matthew. Heard you were a big fan. Hey, hey, Matthew. What's up, man? I heard you were a big fan. Oh, 
Matthew? What's up, man? I heard you were a big fan. What's up, Matthew? Patience tells me you're a big fan. Yeah, hey, Matthew, like, do you vape, bro? Huh, I got a text from Matthew. Turns out he is a big fan. Oh, you guys know Matthew? Oh yeah, I heard he was a big fan. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical and Matthew is a big fan. Absolutely, Matthew. Boom, you're shouted out. Thanks so much for the email there, Patience. Got another one here from... Oh, that's right. The Contractor. Nick, greetings from Iraq. I am a deployed contractor and I want to let you know I love the videos. So, uh, oh, and then he just launches right into his story. So once upon a time, back in the military, I started vaping on a steampunk mod with a Dark Horse RDA. I came across your video, not a fan, and it was so well done. I've been watching ever since. All right. Well, right on. Thank you. I got a lot of shit for that Dark Horse RDA review, but that thing was not good. I have some things I would like to send you once I'm done out here a coin from my command, a mod for a retro vape. What? Yes, I would be honored. In your last vlog, in your last vlog, you mentioned variable voltage and variable wattage devices going bad that are made in China. I would like to share with you my Segeli 100 watt, the OG. It has been dropped, abused, and thrown, but never broken. It has gone to Iraq, Germany, and a whole list of countries that I shouldn't mention. Do you have a PO box you can share? Absolutely. Absolutely, the contractor, you know who you are. Email me please, email me back. I might not have your email saved and I'm sorry, but email me back, I'll definitely get you a PO box. I have a video idea for you, rugged vapes. There are a lot of vapors in the military and one of the things I would look for is vape durability. Not only the mod, but tanks are mostly no good because of the glass. RDAs are usually a good option because of the metal construction. However, it is a pain with all the gear that we carry to also drip. That is a fucking excellent point. I wanna make a sub-ohm tank with a full metal Metal, metal everything. I want to make the most durable sub ohm tank for the military ever. And lastly, please do a shout out in your next vlog for all of those overseas. I know a guy who will stay up to watch your videos for a couple hours. The internet is so slow. Believe it or not, we do really value your opinion. Please, if you refer to this message, refer to me as the contractor. I would not like my name to be shared on the interwebs. Oh, hi, Casey Pickle. Dash the contractor. All right, well, the contractor, absolutely. Let's do a big, huge shout out for everybody overseas. Boom, you are all shouted out. And yeah, durability, I mean, rugged vapes, durability, that's a thing. That's like the, uh, you know, that Geek Vape Aegis legend kit is super durable, like the most durable, durable thing ever, water resistant and durable, but there's just, there's kind of not a lot of those types of mods out there and you make a great point with tanks and glass and breaking and dripping and how it's kind of a pain in the ass and I would suggest like oh well maybe squonking right because you know, dripper is squonking but I feel like squonking if you're deployed overseas and all the stuff you have to carry and do that squonking might even be like a little bit too much of a pain in the ass, but uh, anyway, the contractor, thank you. you. You are definitely all shouted out. Thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it. Please email me back, the contractor, and I will definitely, definitely get you my P.O. box. Got another email here from uh, Nikolai. Nikolai? Uh, anyway, uh, hey Grim Green, you owe me a hug slash fist bump for viewing your vlog to the video, viewing your vlog to the end, every time. Hold me to my word. I mean, definitely do that. If you ever get the chance in real life to chat and you say that you watch the vlog to the end every time, instant hug, instant high five. I feel like that's the least I could do. First off, you were one of the main reasons that I vape. The way that you teach, educate, and talk about vaping is the best ever. Oh, well, thank you. That's that's incredible, thank you. Second off, the absolute main reason that I vape is because of my best friend. He started vaping many years ago, many maybe five to six years ago, and he's only 23. He showed me your vlogs and reviews when I was in Washington and just a noob, but it didn't interest, interest me that much. But now, six months later, I listen to you and Ruby's podcast every day, and I'm at episode 79. Well, slow down, I think we only, I think we just did episode 96 or 97? of the Culture of Clouds podcast. Hashtag yeah, hashtag lit fam, hashtag happy 420, but I absolutely love that kid. But now he is moving across the country, stupid kid. Kid doesn't mean child. It's joking around like my best friend. Love that kid. Could you please give him and our workspace uh 
Cloud Ohms Productions. A huge shout out, and then you can he, you and then you can her some free samples at Vape Expo in Birmingham. You're attending. No, I'm not. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's the thing. So first of all, shout out to onelife.dk slash cloud ohms productions. Shout it out. Uh, I unfortunately will not be at the Vape Expo in Birmingham this year. Like I said earlier, I got no travel planned for the rest of the year. Uh, my only mission this year is to get married and go on a honeymoon and just can live the best life I can. Third off, you were talking about the tremendous huge Nick Salt levels that we are seeing, but I have juice with five milligram Nick Salt that is delicious in an RTA, RDA sub -ohm. Normally I vape two to three milligram nicotine, but with the salt I've been able to vape about half the amount of liquid during the day using Nick Salt. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for being a true troubadour and front leader of the vaping community. You can use my name and the rest of them in this vlog. Thank you and goodbye. Thank Thank you and goodbye. So yeah, absolutely. So, you know, nicotine, um, thank you, Nick, you're shouted out. Nikolai from Denmark, definitely shouted out. So Nick Salt, I'm really torn on the subject of Nick Salt. See, here's the thing, I get it, and, I, and I've said this before, and this is not a soapbox that anybody is unfamiliar with. The high nicotine levels of Nick Salt make sense to me for smokers, or make sense to me for vapors who are going to use Nick Salts very sparingly. If you are like a habitual person, and you're constantly getting into that routine of just vaping, 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 which happens when you vape, because vaping is awesome, but if you get into that like vaping, 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 constantly vaping, constantly vaping, and, you, and, and, you're, and you're vaping 50 milligrams, that's a lot of nicotine and I'm not trying to be the nicotine police but nicotine does affect people in different and weird ways when I was vaping I mean when I was getting pod system after pod system after pod system and it's like 50 milligram 35 milligram 40 milligram and I'm testing out all these pod systems I would get over nicotined and I would also get really irritable, really agitated. I, I wasn't sleeping as well from having that much nicotine on a daily basis. So the idea that high nicotine, you'll use less of it, that's a really good way to go. If you are a three milligram vapor and you vape constantly, you know, all day long and you're on like 1.5 milligram or three milligram and you vape a lot and you wanna vape less, then you'd up your nicotine, right? And then you would vape less because you're getting more nicotine less frequently than getting less nicotine more frequently, right? And so what I am kind of, uh, I don't know, it's not like taking a stance or anything. Again, I'm not here to be the police, but I would love to see some lower nicotines in these pod systems. I would love to see like 18, 12, even a 20 milligram, which I know there's some 20 milligrams out there, just lower nicotine overall. And it's not like everybody should vape lower nicotine. It's like at least give people the option to lower their nicotine if they wanted to. That's the bummer part about like getting a stig. It's like, all right, we got a stig. Congratulations, 60 milligram. That's that. That's what you have to vape. And, I, and if you're hitting that stig like crazy, it's going to affect you, dude. The nicotine is is going, it's too much nicotine. It's, I think it's genuinely just too much nicotine. And yeah, uh, some five milligram salt nick, some, I would even take a six milligram salt nick and use it in a mouth to lung sort of situation. I feel like maybe three or six milligram salt nick would be comparable to like 12 milligram, like traditional nicotine, which is like my favorite. Like that's normally what I normally vape is 12 milligram Freebase, some people call it freebase. I hate that word freebase because it sounds a little too druggy to me. So maybe I'll just start calling it traditional tobacco or traditional tobacco, traditional nicotine. But anyway, Nikolai, thank you. Thank you so much for that email. We are already, we are already running way too long here. But I do wanna answer one more viewer mail from Mr. Matt here, cause it's a really good topic. And he writes in and says, hey Grim, my name is Matt from the UK. Uh, I'm not a long-term vapor, but I've been vaping for about a year and a half. Uh, I finally kicked the cigs in October 2017. Congratulations, bump that fist. I look forward to the Thursdays, the vlog. Uh, always seems ready as I come home from work, which is a really great thing. My question is, what's your aspirations for the future of vaping? Like if we've won all the battles and saved all the smokers, 
what would this world look like for you? Really good question. I find myself wondering a lot as it seems we always have to defend our love of vaping. I thought it would be amazing if Big Tobacco started to make batteries for vaping and design some awesome batteries. Sorry if this was long. If there's a chance, I would like to give a shout out to my wonderful supportive wife. We actually got married on Star Wars Day this year and my three children who I turned to vaping for. Yeah, absolutely. Matt, your wife who whose name I don't know, but congratulations. You got married on Star Wars Day. I think that's fantastic. You're definitely shouted out. Thanks for all you do. I have nothing but respect for your work. Keep vaping, Matt. P.S. If my email doesn't read well, I'm dyslexic as fuck. I never understood they used a name so bloody hard to spell a cruel joke in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a cruel joke as well because I am Matt. We are, we're like this, man. I am dyslexic as fuck. Fuck. And even just typing the word dyslexic and having the word that describes the dyslexic condition being such a complicated word as dyslexic, it's got to be just a cruel joke. But no, your, your email made perfect sense to me. Perfect sense to me. Maybe it's because I'm dyslexic and I read it as a dyslexic person. So the future of vaping. So we've won all the battles. So you're basically saying like vaping is an accepted thing. In the world, it, there is, you know, uh, unlimited access to uh, vapor products for adults, and we have devices and atomizers and liquids, and, it, and it's an accepted thing. And smoking rates are the lowest they have ever been worldwide. And people are using vaping to get away from smoking, and people are eventually going to get away from vaping. I mean, truly and honestly, I want vaping to be like a thing that people just just pass through, right? There's always going to be like this really strong hobbyist market in vaping. I definitely, definitely do believe that. I love hobbyist vaping. I like fiddling around with stuff. I like putting setups together. I like rebuilding. I like rewicking. I like tasting different juices and DIYing and crafting your own juices. And I think this, this like hobbyist community of vaping is always, always going to be around. But I, what I want to see from the majority of people is smokers who get a vape, who use that vape to quit smoking, who might continue using that vape for a little bit, and then eventually just stop vaping altogether. What I want is a world of non-smokers. And at the same time that we want this world of non-smokers, I also really want to sort of nurture and cultivate this like hobbyist market. Like we are the proselytizers of vaping. We're the ones who are telling people to vape. You have a friend that smokes. It's like, hey, you want to try vaping? You know, you have a you have a family member that smokes. It's like, hey, you should try vaping. You meet someone on the street and they're like, hey, what is that? And you go, oh, it's a, it's a vape. If you're a smoker, you should definitely try it. Like we are the ones on the front lines. Like we're the people out there spreading this news about vaping. And I think that's honestly what the community is for. And, and, and I mean, it's going to draw a lot of parallels between like religion and things like this. Like, yes, go tell people, I, I, I believe in proselytizing. I believe that if you believe in something that you should definitely do everything you can to get your message to as many people as possible. And I think the good news of vaping is something that we definitely need to spread. And I think that's what the hobbyist market is for so that we can get into it so that we can love vaping. And so we can continue to grow this industry in order to help smokers quit smoking and then eventually quit vaping. And it's like when they quit vaping, it's like, you know, well, thanks for coming by. Like, thanks for stopping by. Who's next? Welcome. Here's how you do things. You want to rebuild? Here, we'll teach you how to rebuild. We'll teach you how to build that RTA. You want to rick wick it correctly? Absolutely. Here's how we're going to wick it correctly. Here's how you can have a satisfying vape experience. I love that. I love that, and that's that's the world uh, that's the world I want to live in there, Matt. But thank you, thank you so much for sending in an email. We're gonna have to cut this off because this has been going on just way too long. But if anybody else out there has any viewer mails that they would like to see answered on this here vlog program, you can send them on over. Nick at GrimGreen.com. Just mark it viewer mails and they always get read by me by my two eyes and used and filed accordingly and then used on this here vlog program so awesome well what we're gonna do right now is uh it's time for a very random juice tasting
And it's a bummer because I had some more viewer mails there, and there was there was one with like a, a really cool dog in it, and we'll share that next week. In fact, I should have put this at the beginning of the program, but uh, I may not have a vlog next week. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I have a 510 report and a vlog next week. I just might not have a vlog next week because I'm traveling up to Colorado. I'm going to hang out with Ruby Roo. We got some dope shit planned and that's what I'm doing next week. But the juice that we have to taste today, let me get my atomizer. Let me get my juice. What's the resistance of this atomizer? Can I run this on the Titan? Because that would look sick as tits. Eh, it's a 0.17. I feel like a 0.17 is going to need some regulation. So we're going to put it on my uh, blue USB arc mod because I have a freshly built and wicked Twisted Messes 24 Pro series ready to go for a juice tasting. And I have it topped with a DHD Bats drip tip because we're getting into fall. Like, don't get me wrong, I love summer, but I love fall in Southern California. You have these beautiful warm days, right? Like 70 degrees and it's breezy and perfect and you can go to the beach and you can eat outside and you can go on hikes and it's wonderful and you're not being punished by this like punishing fucking heat from the sun and in the evenings it cools down and I can sit on my patio in like a hoodie and have it be like fall type of weather fall is the best fall is literally the best and that's why i have bats on here because bats halloween fall it all makes sense but the juice the juice that we have to vape today comes from essence vapor co this is called amaretto cold brew i used to be a really really big fan of uh of coffee flavored liquids i one of one of my first flavors that i really truly loved came from this company called diet smokes which shout out to anybody that remembers diet smokes shout out to anybody that remembers parked from diet smokes parked that's the way he said his name so guys parked he was a youtube -y, uh, reviewer type of guy that ended up opening up his own shop and Man, I have so many stories from the early days of vaping. Someday I'll have to tell you the story of when I announced that I was doing a juice company, how I lost like half my subscribers. That's a fun story to tell. And now it's like, wow, Mike Vapes has released like 12 RDAs. Yeah, cool. You know, it's a normal thing now. Wasn't so normal once upon a time for reviewers to release products. I caught a ton, ton of shit ton of shit. But we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is Essence Vapor Co. Amaretto Cold Brew. We tried their Fiji apple juice. It was like Fiji apple and hibiscus. And it was just, it was, it was gross. Like I'm going to be real honest. It was gross. It wasn't for me. It's not a juice that I vaped after that segment. I just couldn't stand that juice. But I really like the guy from Essence Vapor Co. I met Ryan in Irvine and I thought he was a real stand-up dude and he passed off some juices to me. So I'm going to give Essence Vapor Co. another try here with the Amaretto Cold Brew. First of all, I mean, we have to do a knuckle test. I believe this is 3 milligram 70 VG 20. PG. So let's just do a quick knuckle test. I was kind of expecting this uh, juice to be uh, a little uh, darker than it is. Oh, fuck me running. That tastes delicious. Wow, that's good. But what I meant to say before I got off on that weird tangent, parked, parked from dot smokes, parked, had this juice that he called caramel macchiato. And this is before whatever, IP uh, theft or, you know, intellectual property rights or anything like that. We just called it caramel macchiato and it tasted exactly like exactly like a caramel macchiato. It was creamy and coffee and caramel and God, I loved it. I worshiped this juice. It was so delicious. So if that's anything like this juice, I think we're all, I think we're all in for a real big treat. So I just got to juice up my coils. This is always the most boring part. And I always try to start the juice segment with a freshly built, freshly wicked RDA. And unfortunately, juicing it it's just one of the boring parts. And I realize I could sit here and juice it and not talk, and then I wouldn't have to edit any of this into the video, but you know, I like to keep the conversation going. We gotta do something to make this vlog even longer. Yeah, there we go. Okay, 0.17, 94 watts. Freaking perfect. Oh, the vapor smells good. Oh, the vapor smells good. <sighs> God, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed this juice doesn't let me down. So I get the feeling that this is going to be a little bit of maybe a more delicate flavor. So I'm not going to rock this 0.17 at a full 95 watts. I'm going to turn it down. I'm going to turn it down to about 75 watts. 
just to start out with. I just don't want to like annihilate these flavors. There's some flavors that have delicate, you know, delicate flavors in them that when you apply a lot of wattage to it, it just gets, you know, fuck, it just gets real burnt and like cooked off. Uh, my 50, good lord, why does this adjust in 0.1 watt increments? Anyway, Twisted Mess is 24 Pro Series. I've got the airflow turned down about halfway and I still just love the way that setup looks. The blue on blue, fuck that's cool. All right, first try, here we go. Amaretto Cold Brew, Essence Vapor, cheers. All right, so I'm gonna do that thing where I sit back and I vape this for a little bit and then we're gonna come back and talk about it. Cue the music. All right, so yeah, this juice um, kind of won me over right away. That first toot that I took just tasted like pure, pure deliciousness. Just pure, pure deliciousness. It kind of reminds me of, now this is gonna be a weird reference, but does any, uh, does anybody remember those tins of coffee you would get called International Delights? Yes, International Delights. This tastes like those International Delights coffee. It tastes like, it doesn't taste like a fresh brewed cup of coffee with cream and caramel and amaretto in it or anything like that. It is a very cohesive flavor. The coffee tastes a little artificial, but cold brew tastes a little artificial to me anyway sometimes. Definitely has like a really nice creamy coffee flavor. There's a little bit of like caramely sweetness in there as well. And it's topped off with like this really sort of like, not over the top, but a little bit pungent of like an amaretto type of situation in it. The juice, the longer that I vape it, it just, it gets a little bit throaty. And I know that doesn't say much because I think a lot of juices are throaty, but this one gets real throaty on me, real high up. It's not a deep throaty that is something, that's a throaty that I generally like. This is a high throaty, almost has that like, uh, like that salt nick harshness to it, even though it's not a salt nick juice, if that makes sense. But the, the, the flavor of it is just stellar. It is a good, good flavor. It doesn't taste exactly like that caramel macchiato that I used to love, but it's very, very similar. It's like creamy, sugary coffee, a little bit of caramel, a little bit of amaretto on top. It's a very cohesive flavor, although I do get more of the amaretto on the exhale than I do on the inhale. On the inhale, it's just like creamy coffee. It tastes like warm, creamy coffee, and on that exhale, you get a little bit more of the caramel notes, you get a little bit more of that like amaretto note that's in it. Great, that's glorious. That's a glorious juice. Whenever I'm tasting juices, like when I really, really want to taste my juices, I try to exhale through my mouth and my nose at the same time because all, I mean, and this is like third grade, you know, science right here, but all you taste, we all know, all you taste on your mouth is sour, sweet, salty, and bitter. That's it. Anything else in your mouth that you perceive as floral or fruity or coffee or musty or or band-aid or any other flavor component you're tasting it through your nose and when you exhale the vapor through your mouth and your nose at the same time i feel like that's the only time you're going to get the full flavor of the juice and it's great this is a great flavor wow essence vapor co really redeemed yourselves with this amaretto cold brew coffee wow that's good if you're a coffee person if you're a coffee enjoyer this amaretto cold brew is uh i mean honestly since that caramel macchiato one of the best coffee flavors i think i've ever had it is just on point very cohesive flavor that's good that's good that's, oh i leaked juice oh i was over dripping over dripping again damn it i don't know why i over drip i ju i don't know i don't know what the compulsion is to drip like that to just drip and drip and drip and not vape and drip and not vape. It's good. It's good. This is good. I'm recommending this. This is like a recommended thing. If you look, if you're not into coffee, you're not going to enjoy this. But if you like coffee vapes and you want a nice, sweet 
creamy, caramely, delicious coffee vape. I think this is great. I think you're gonna go, I think this is gonna really be a good, what am I even saying right now? I think it's gonna be exactly what you're looking for. I would honestly like to try this in like that Falcon tank. I think it would do good in that tank. Good, really good, little throaty. Gets a little throaty back there, but I like it. Thank you, Essence Vapor Co. Awesome, I like having a really bad juice and a really good juice, because the really good juice kind of makes me forget about the really bad juice I had earlier. So now, oh, we're coming to the end of the vlog. This is we're basically at the end of the vlog, you guys. This is crazy. All right, well, we're gonna wrap this vlog up. It's time for favorite comments of the week. much vape in this room right now. We got some favorite comments of the week. Once again, huge shout out to Nico from Finland for always going through and capturing some comments of the week. I definitely feel a burp coming, so I'm gonna pause and avoid having you having to hear it. Anyway, first comment of the week here comes from Cody. Cody makes an excellent point. A lot of these comments of the week this week are not necessarily like comedic in nature, but rather informative in nature. Kids are vaping for the same reason that kids have been smoking forever. I guarantee 10 to 20 years ago, there were over 2 million middle school and high school students smoking cigarettes. Yes, absolutely. I, I bet even less than that. I bet even like eight or nine years ago, there were two to three million middle school and high school kids smoking cigarettes. And now that these kids are using a product, albeit illegally, which I do not support, but now that these kids are using a product that now the UK is saying more. Now the Royal College of Physicians is saying 97% better for you than traditional tobacco cigarettes. In the first tobacco harm reduction report they released, they said it's at least, they use that term, at least, 95% and now they are confidently saying 97%. But now that all of these kids are picking up vaping, which again is completely illegal and something I don't support, they're not smoking cigarettes anymore. The other side of this coin is that less kids are smoking cigarettes. And we know 100%, dude, like what bad shit is in cigarettes and how awful it is for you and how it kills 480,000 Americans every year, and we're upset that they're not smoking cigarettes. That's unbelievable to me. And uh, Cody, you make an excellent point. Now this next one, uh, this next one is also a long one, but it's kind of along the same lines as the previous one. Uh, so Jeff wrote in, and like I said, it's long, but we're just gonna dive right into it. Kids will be kids. When I was underage, we drank and smoked. Hell, back then we could just call a cab and have them deliver a case of beer to the party. Adults like flavors and cool box art too. I'm all for responsible marketing, but kids will be kids regardless. They used to think smoking is cool, which made big tobacco happy. Now they think vaping is cool, which makes big tobacco angry. I'm getting tired of hearing the whole poor children excuse. It's about money and nothing else. Change the age, flavor, and box art, and kids will still do it. Take a look in your liquor store. Lots of cool labels and yummy flavors in those bottles, minus all the outrage, and kids find a way to get that too. The back-to-school sale thing was a bad idea, but I don't think they did it on purpose. Back-to-school sales have been a thing for decades and applies to more than just kids and school stuff. But I agree Agree. More thought should have been put into the wording for the sake of the vaping community. It just gives the snowflakes more to whine about. I'm for responsible regulation, but once you give them an inch, they will take a mile. Not smoking hurts more than just big tobacco. Imagine how much it will hurt the health industry when cancer rates fall off a cliff. I have teens and I've caught them with a jewel they got from someone at school. While I don't approve, I'm relieved they didn't get cigarettes. When I was a kid, my mom was terrified I would do weed, the so-called gateway drug drug. The devil's weed. In this day and age of meth, bath salts, and Tide Pods, parents hope weed is all their kids will try. I'm sorry, but catching my teens with a vape pen is the least of my worries. Jeff, Thank you for being a reasonable person. Thank you for being a responsible adult. And congratulations on uh, getting away from traditional tobacco cigarettes with vaping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay, I lied. Some of them are going to be funny. <laughs> this little back and forth between Jason and Brian, I-, I thought was fucking hilarious. So Jason says, where can I get a goon hat? And Brian chimes in, the internet. <laughs> that's like the most, like, I just love that that's like the most, like, a fuck you response to like an honest question. Like, hey, where can I get a goon hat? Uh, the internet. <laughs> See, and this one's not even, the words in this aren't even funny. I was just... I'm just going to read this, and I'm going to see if you notice what I notice. Christina left a comment. The camera quality of the Uppy Closey is incredible. Edit. The whole video has amazing camera quality. Then I said thank you. Then someone else commented and said you should do a room tour. And then two people that commented one right after the other both had Kermit the Frog as their avatar. Like, that's so fun. <laughs> that's... What are the odds of that? Never tell me the odds. But seriously, what what are the odds of that that two random people watching one of my reviews both commented one right after the other and they both had kermit the frog as their avatars i feel like they planned this or something because that's just (laughs) ah that really caught me off guard i don't know why i thought that was so funny kevin kevin left a comment talking about tariffs and kind of slamming trump so i don't know this isn't a political show but let's talk about it i mean i guess it is kind of a political show i mean i I do talk about politics and vaping is now a political thing so yeah fuck it we're talking about politics now so the vape industry is about to be decimated by trump's tariffs and really no one is talking about it we're talking about 25 percent hikes in some areas as much as 50 percent in others since china had little headroom to begin with these tariffs will be directly passed on to the consumers they are useless and just just plain stupid tariffs too. It's not like there is any direct competition between China and the US. An AV clone costing $30 instead of $20 is not suddenly going to be competitive with a $350 authentic AV mod. There is virtually no regulated mod industry in America, so all that tariff money will just be pocketed by the US government. How you liking Trump now? So here's the things. Um, I, I don't. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know what's going on with all of these tariffs. I've read into them as much as I possibly can. I, I've used mainstream media news sources. I've used Reddit. I've used Facebook. I've tried to gather as much as I can about these tariffs. And the idea behind these tariffs is that it will make the cheaper product less desirable to the consumer. So right now. And I'm going to use it as it relates to vaping and not necessarily any other industry, right? So right now, you could have a... There, this is a perfect example. Where's this? Here's this. This is the perfect example right here. Just the mech mod. We're going to take the RDA off so it doesn't distract us. So this mech mod is manufactured in the United States by Kennedy Vapor. Steve the Machinist machines these in Southern California and sells them for the price of $175. These tariffs obviously have nothing to do with Steve. Steve can continue manufacturing these and cranking these out and selling these for $175. That's capitalism. That's him making a profit off of his skills and work. And if another company created a similar mech mod and was cranking them out in China, you could probably produce and sell this mod from China for about 40 bucks, maybe 50 bucks, maybe 50 bucks if you're using like real like nice copper and stainless steel. But this same mod, the dancing mod across my hand, this is to represent them coming out of the factory, by the way, if that's if that was lost in translation a little bit. So these mods can be produced for probably $30 in China and then turn around and sold in the United States for $40, $50. And so worst case scenario with these mods coming out of China and being produced for $30 cost, which means that you have to import it into the United States. And before you could do that at no cost, but now it's going to cost money for China to get these mods to the United States. And let's say it's a 50% markup. So now your $30 mod is now a $60 mod, which means you need to maintain your overheads for your wholesale and your distros, which means this $60 mod is probably going to cost in the range of like $100 to $125, depending on what margins like the wholesalers and the distros are after. The idea behind all of these tariffs is to make this cheaper Chinese product that wasn't produced in the United States that was produced in China be less desirable than something that was produced 
in the United States. The consumer will look at the price and go, well, for 175 bucks, I can have something that was made in the United States, or for 135 bucks, I can have something that was made in China. The whole point of this is Trump is trying to very poorly, sorry, IMO, very poorly sort of uh, reinvigorate manufacturing in the United States. And manufacturing in the United States is expensive and the tariffs are designed to offset that cost so the consumer will choose to buy American products rather than cheap Chinese products. It is going to fuck with the vape industry hard. It already is fucking with the vape industry hard, hence why I have no packages from China in my possession right now. China manufacturers and China companies are kind of freaking out about this, and I think our steady diet of new, 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 new vape stuff is going to kind of uh, lessen trail off a little bit. So Kevin, you make an excellent point. Let's move on. We got two more here. Got two more that I want to go through. How are we doing on time? Don't even care. It's going to be a long vlog. Eric W left a comment. Nick, handleable green. Yeah, Eric, handleable. Handleable is not really a word, is it? Handleable is a word that I use very frequently when I'm talking about something like this glass mech mod, real handleable. This Kennedy, this Kennedy is insanely handleable. This Kennedy is more handleable than that glass because it's got these raised portions at the top and bottom. So you can handle it, you could you could throw it around from side to side, you can roll it in your hand a little bit and it's got that little bit of security right there so you're not gonna drop it and it just becomes, I don't know, a really handleable thing. So yeah, Eric, I'm gonna keep saying handleable. <laughs> and finally, last favorite comment of the week. I'm gonna leave you with this from Travis. He says, if people don't stop interrupting my sacred vlog time, I'm gonna start kicking some asses. I truly and honestly just didn't realize that people take the vlog that seriously. Here's the thing, Travis. Don't take the vlog that seriously, man. <laughs> It's just it's just me for two hours. You, you can come back anytime. In fact, YouTube will remember uh, nine times out of ten. Like YouTube will remember where you left off. So if it's like, uh, Travis, I need you to do, Travis, can you take out the trash real quick? Hey, Travis, what are you doing? Just pause it. Do your thing. Come back. Finish it. The vlog's going to be here. The vlog's going to be waiting here right for you, Travis. I'll make sure of that. <laughs> anyway, that was hilarious. Thank you, Travis, for leaving such an entertaining comment. And you know what? There's no way to get into comments of the week. You just have to comment. So if you have a comment and you want to leave it below, you never know. I'll catch it or Nico will catch it and it could end up in, uh, in the favorite comments of the week. But that's it. We're done. We're done with this vlog. Let me take a quick look around the room and make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh, I wanted to show you this real quick. This is what I did when I was cleaning up. Yes. Tell me that doesn't look just super sexy af. I wish I could make the light in here red. I know when you press it, it turns, oh, it turns green. Maybe it's a fuller charge in there. I'm not really sure, but I put that red original recipe recoil on this, uh, on this mass mod. Dude, look at that. That's cool as shit. That's super cool. Sorry, it's out of focus. That, that's super cool. But yeah, I think we're done. I didn't forget anything. We talked about the Stigs, we're good to go. I hope this was a long vlog and I hope you all enjoyed it. And I always say this, but the people that make it to the end of the vlog, you're just my favorite damn people on earth. If I ever have the opportunity to meet you in real life, I do dispense hugs or crisp high fives. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna vape this little dog RTA uh, and I'm gonna edit video and that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I got planned for today anybody I also I got a new camera I wasn't gonna say it in this vlog, but I got a new camera and it's sitting right here in front of me And uh, I'm really excited for the future videos on this here YouTube because I I got a new camera I'm just really excited about it, but thank you so much everybody for watching and as always yeah, dude Let's keep on vaping